It's time to wheel out Chris Matthews for Hardball 2 on Amigos, episode 329. Hi everybody, welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today Aaron will be talking about Hardball Part 2. Mmm, it does exist. Yeah. Now, Aaron... <laughs> When you uh, when you first started playing baseball games, mm -hmm. were you on the were you on a computer? Or was your first baseball game on a console? I would say it was probably on a console, probably the old twenty six hundred boaster. Did you play uh, home run or yeah. real sports? Home run, home yeah, run, absolutely. The, the the least. I mean, really, <laughs> on the on the you know the uh, pong machines, mm -hmm. there was I'm sure some of them had some sort of baseball variant that yeah. I played. Yeah, so it could have even been that. And before that, in the arcades, you could play those mechanical baseball bat. games. Yeah. yeah, so that probably was even that. Now mm. I think about it. Yeah, I really love those pitch and bat They're games. They're so great. Yeah. Especially the real sort of advanced ones. They're mm -hmm. so nice, aren't they? I love the ones at Myrtle Beach. They've got them all lined up in a row. And you watch the little, it's all mechanical, the little runners advance around the bases. Yeah. And they're yeah. all just it's like all, cut it's out. It's so awesome. Yeah. I love that. But they cost, and keeping those up... Forget yeah, about it. There are a million billion yeah, dollars. No, it's too hard. What was the first time you played a baseball game and you were actually satisfied with the experience? That would easily. I mean, you know the answer before I even say it. And that's going to be in television, baseball. Major mm -hmm. League Baseball. That is the one of the most underrated games of all time because everybody hates in, in television controller, but that's the one of the few games that took full advantage of it. And at the time, to have independent control on demand of all your players, like it was not even remotely feasible mm -hmm. to even think about doing something like that on an, on another type of controller. And it's a game that really holds up well even today. I mean, you can play good old school game of that right now. Me and you've done it. Yeah. We've sat down and played it. It's a great one. What about you? You you were, came along a little bit later. I did. I came along. Uh, in the first baseball game I ever played was Star League Baseball for the Atari 8-bit yes. computers. And this yeah. is one of these games, you know, baseball games probably more so than any other type of sports games are defined by the perspective. You've got the old behind the pitcher. Yep. You've got the behind the batter. And then you have the sky view. Okay. And Star <laughs> Starling Baseball is you're looking down from the good year. This is like, this if you're thing. like the Lord looking right. down. It's, That's right. I remember that. It's The guys look actually... The stadiums have looked pretty good, in yeah. That, but the guys are teeny. They're teeny tiny. They make the Cincy soccer guys look like giants. Exactly, They're super tiny. That was the first baseball game I played, and I still, I still have good memories of playing it. I still fire it up from time to time. But um, after that, you know, I, I jumped from the Atari to the NES, and there's really when you start playing those NES baseball games, you know, bases loaded, RBI baseball. There's a there's a pretty significant gulf that that happened. There. What was the what was the black box baseball game? That was pretty that was pretty much garbage. That was baseball. It was just called baseball. <laughs> That's those black box. They could just get away with that. Yeah, they yeah. did what the old Atari used to do. It's just like, listen, right. this is car racing. They've, this yep. is all you get. <laughs> exactly. This is all there'll ever be right here. <laughs> racing. That's yeah. It. Now, in baseball's defense, it was released in 1983 in Japan, so it was already a couple of years yeah. older than than it was. But it really wasn't until the late 80s when um you know RBI baseball. Ten, uh, when uh, when that started to come out, you know the Tengen RBI yeah. baseball, um, and uh, but my favorite baseball game uh, on the NES is a game called Bad News Baseball. I don't know if you've ever played that. It's by Tecmo. Aaron. Is it like oh well, you know there it's gonna be good. Yeah, yeah. Now is it like the Bad News Bears? Or something? I think that, I think I'm almost certain it was not called Bad News Baseball in Japan. I think they were trying to the corner of that a little bit. Even yeah. though all the all the players are sort of kid like. Yeah. You know? I hate that. Yeah, but it, they're not they're not cute. Well, they are. I guess they are. They are. Yeah. They're everything you hate. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. okay. I mean, listen, it's it's okay if they go. Like, <clears throat> is the outfield wall like the old R gang fence looking thing. <laughs> it should like be. That. It should be. Unfortunately, it's not. It's it's one of those mishmashes where you're playing in major league stadiums. Yeah. And you, it, I'll tell you, there's cutscenes in this game. And when you're it, when you hit a home run, your player goes down the aisle slapping fives with all the guys. Your manager looks like Hawk from the Road Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I don't know. They never explain it. But yeah, that Tecmo, they made, I mean, of course, you got Tecmo basketball, Tecmo Super Bowl. Yeah. And of this, this baseball game, which is They were is quite fantastic. a studio. Yeah. You know, because yeah. they went on to do a lot of great stuff in the arcade and mm -hmm. whatnot. Now, if you, had to, if you had to sit down and think about it, if you had to say, okay, this is my all time favorite baseball game on any console, arcade, computer, what would you, what would you pick? Boy, I'd probably go with Little League Baseball.
Baseball. Little League Baseball on the on the NES. That's probably my favorite. I don't know what that is. Uh, it's a it's a That's very not what I expected. It's a pick, very underrated. Way. It's actually by Kimco, which is another you know Japanese publisher. Yeah. But I know what you're going to say. Yeah. You're going to say, give me the old Baseball Stars 2, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought you would say, frankly. No, the, the problem with Baseball Stars 2 is that uh, the uh, I don't like all of the power-up stuff. You know, yeah. that, that kind of ruins the You don't have to use me. it, though. Yeah, but the fact that it's there annoys me. <laughs> But what about the burp, 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 that stuff? That's well, it's like playing Blood Money. You play it for the intro, and then you just switch it off. So you're telling me you don't think it's a good game? Oh, no, it's a great game. It's a great game. It's just not my favorite. It's well, definitely in my top five. I love it. I think I think it's really good. Also, I whenever I think about playing, I think about standing up. And, man, I hate standing up. I like sitting down. You know what I really like? What? Laying down. <laughs> Did you ever play baseball when you were a kid? <laughs> Man, we've talked about this a million times. I don't remember. We played in the same league behind oh, that's the middle right. school. That's right, the horror league. I was just wondering <laughs> how long your lethargy and laziness, how Listen, far back I was extended. In, when I was holding court in right field, nobody cared what I did. I'm sure I laid down. You could get away with that back in the day. Yeah, you could you could lay you could get away with laying down when you're out in the outfield. Because on the flip side, you stink. Yeah, exactly. That's the bad part of that. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a pro and a con, really. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Aaron, let's leave this uh, glorious talk and move on to this week's Amiga News, shall we? Amiga News. Now, Aaron, it's been kind of a light news week. Right before Christmas, what are you going to yeah. do? Yeah. So uh, we've only got one story, but what a story it is, Aaron. Yeah. Our friend Chris Edwards is back with the Pi Mega 2. Yeah. Now, Aaron, you uh, have you messed around with the Pi Mega much? I, I've, I've messed around with the, the earlier version of the Pi mm. Mega, and it was awesome. I thought it was really good. And, of course, I had it's funny. This this broke a lot. It was last Friday, mm-hmm. right before we aired. And we probably normally would have covered it then, except we were switching homes. Right. <laughs> At that point, and Bo was feverishly going through all these scenes, trying to get them set up. Uh, but uh, this is just a this is just a thing that Chris does uh, and sets it up, and I'll let you. It's just like a full blown Amiga set setup. Put it on your Pi, good to go. You have to supply your the ROMs for it, but otherwise mm-hmm. you're good to go. But it's a it's a it's you basically you pop the SD card in, and and it, it runs just like an Amiga, right? That's the attraction. That's the attraction, yeah. and you can play your games and stuff. Uh, this was a, I mean, I had a lot of people after we did the show say, hey, dummies, why didn't you talk about this? Well, it's like, well, we, like right. I said. Uh, so this was a pretty big deal. I believe he usually only puts these out maybe, well, this is 2.0, so there hasn't been a ton of these. Mm-hmm. I know he's, a, of course, you know, if, if you know anything about Chris Edwards, he's a he's a crazy maniac when it comes to the Amiga, and he's uh, always got his hand at about 20 pies. Yeah. So this is pie number 21. Yeah. But this was quite a this is quite a piece of kit here. The uh, the wacky part of this is I started hearing uh, uh, rumors and and stuff that there had been some weird behind the scenes baloney uh, when it comes to this, and I'm not going to go into it too deep because I'm sure a lot of people that know about it already. But certain people, you know, the, here we go. I'm gonna go down the line. I'm gonna go right, down the road here. I'm curious to see what you're going to say. Well, I mean, listen, I don't know where you're going with this. It only takes one dipstick to hose to get everybody wound up, mm-hmm. right? And that's so, usually me. No, no, I'm talking a proper dipstick, no, okay. not just like a no, because you don't really. You're in a lot of ways you're like me. We don't know quite enough to be real dangerous. No. We're semi dangerous. It doesn't take much, and so you had a goof that gave Chris trouble, and I saw him post something on Twitter about it. And it made the rounds about someone somewhere didn't like this for because of some kind of ROM stuff or whatever, copyright this or whatever. And they did a bunch of stupid crap, uh, in, including threats, like physical threats, if you could believe So that. this is somebody that's probably not affiliated with the Amiga Corporation. Just someone vigilante right. for justice. Cor- well, it's a nut job. Yeah, a well, better that's, way to put yeah, it. yeah. And you know, the internet breeds these goofballs they like do. they're going out of style. They do. You know? Uh, so, uh, and it has caused more than a little uh, discomfort for the poor guy. So, luckily, I will say this. Um, listen, the, uh, the Amiga community gets a lot of bad rap a lot of times. Because often, you got a couple goofballs, like I said, that make everyone look like an idiot. Mm-hmm. Like, we're, And the majority of the people are not. And I saw a lot of 
good solid support uh, and standing behind them and you know trying to get this trying to get past this crap. And hopefully this is a, a one-time event that won't uh, come back uh, ever again. Right. You know, and so I guess to 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 put a uh, to put a bow on it, uh, if you see someone doing something stupid, you know, try to calm these people down. And if you see someone doing something that's illegal, don't hesitate. Take take care of business. Mm-hmm. You can't put up with that crap. Yeah. We live in the states. <clears throat> And it seems like every week there's some sort of incident. In the old days of the BBSs, we used to threaten each other all the time. All right. In fact, the guy even came to my house one time. All right. But nothing really came of it. Right. Because it was a different time. Mm-hmm. This is not that time. Mm-hmm. People do bad stuff to one another. You yeah. got to be careful. And so uh, everyone needs to remain calm. I know them almost everyone. There's literally like talking one or two percent, probably less than that, probably one percent of one percent that are idiots mm-hmm. that cause people problems. So, and the sad thing is, it's cast a shadow over an otherwise brilliant piece of work. And by the way, uh, uh, if you've looked at these things, they don't build themselves. Like, this crap takes a huge chunk of your life to do. It's not easy, mm-hmm. you know. Just think of the amount of data you move, the amount of configuration you have to do to put something like this together. It's It's... It's craziness. We I we could never do it. No. That's for sure. Oh, no, 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 absolutely not. No. Uh, so if you're into this sort of thing, check it out. I believe it's linked right here in the video. Uh, and all, all the video here, we've got a, a, the YouTube uh, has all the links you need, and, and it's a very descriptive. Uh, if this is your cup of tea, check it out. And uh, hopefully this will be the last time I have to go on, 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 on a th- thought about the stupidity of Especially this close to Christmas, ridiculous. No more, no more goofs. But every community's got a bunch of goofs. That's so there true. you go. But what else? You guys, that, that's all we got. Isn't that's it? all we got this week. It's been a light news week. But I'll tell you what's not been a light. What's, what's who's not a light weight in the world of retro? And that's our buddy Frank over at Retro Rewind. That's true. C-A. That's true. And you know, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, Boaster. And I'll tell you why. This is a banner week for the Frank. All right. I, in fact, I wrote him a personal message boat of congratulations because we have actually had the release of the Coco portions. That's right. Of Frank's uh, repertoire over at Retro Rewind. You can now go to Frank here in North America, mm-hmm. boat, who got good to go, ready to sell, and get you a Coco SDC. Mm. The uh, and listen, S- this isn't that crap white. Class well, no, multi thing. No, this, thing. It, no, that this is a crap. black. That's good. Uh, this is a black one. It's black. <laughs> so you're ragging on the color. That's right. None of that white. I like the white it, and the black. Listen, but I'm listen, I don't see color when it comes to SD cards. Mm. That much said, this thing uh, will be top quality, of course. I also saw that he just got a new shipment of the Kung Fu flashes in. They're nice. good to go. Uh, Christmas time is here, boat. So when it comes to Christmas gifts, now you got to go. It's yep. time to go, and what better place to buy uh, the geeks in your family some cool retro crap than over at RetroRewind.ca? If you do this, please, we implore you, use the promo code Tiz Amigos. That's T I S. Right. Like Tiz the season. Amigos, save ten percent on your order. Put in a good word for your good pal Boat Nay. And if we outdraw everyone else in this holiday season with this product code here, all of a sudden, bam, we're giving away gift cards, big ones, like what is it, fifty bucks? Fifty dollar gift cards coming our way. You can't, you cannot, uh, you cannot beat that. Uh, so there you go. So that's RetroRewind.ca. Get your Amiga. Get uh, ca- recapped. Get a get caps for it. Get your C64 recap. Get caps for that. Your CD TVs, your C uh, C one twenty eights, any of the Commodore family, you're good to go. He's got flashcards, ROMs, all sorts of wacky stuff. He, a full line of repair services, pretty much anything you could possibly need for your Commodore line of computers, and now more and more stuff coming for the Coco. Frank is going to be your one stop shop <laughs> specifically if you are located in the North American region. Although Frank has excellent 
on time shipping overseas. He's not like some people where you order things and then you never hear from them. Frank's a real guy and he actually responds he's, to email. He's a real boy. He's a real boy. He gained sentience <laughs> like Pinocchio. <laughs> well done. <laughs> what a weird way to put that, but he's a real person. Listen, you got to say these things now. You remember he does those things on the TV where like, listen, it's always for old people. <laughs> Call Julie right now. And it's this good-looking young girl. She'll help you out. She's got the head so she yep. looks up. She's like, ah. And you know you're calling Butch, the laid-off construction worker. What do you want? You know. Frank, he's a real guy. You're he's right. He's a real but guy. Now that I think about he's it. He's a real guy. So, with all that said, Boat, Retro Real and not CA, are you ready to move on to Let's the main event? Let's move on to the main event. We're not messing around today. We did that in a pre-show. This week, boat, bam! It's hardball two, mm-hmm. hardball two, boat. What do you know about the old HB two? <clears throat> well, I know that the hardball series of games, I cannot disassociate themselves with the PC. You know, like when I was playing all the games that I like to play on the console, and I would go to Babbage's and look around. Babbage's, yeah, jeez, that's yeah, oh gosh, it's been a while. You eh? go around and. It seemed like hardball was always the the option available to the PC player, at, in, you know, in the eighties and nineties. Yeah, yeah. You know, the name hardball is dumb. Okay, Do you I think went, so. In the eighties, remember Hard Bodies? Those movies were yeah. these like uh, these were like X rated. No, they weren't X rated. They were like uh, body summer fun. Mm. They'd come on like Cinemax at like two in the morning. Okay, you okay. Know? Remember, you don't remember Hard Bodies? Mm. Anyway, this was a. Hardball is a dumb name. Mm. Okay, so I, don't, don't you agree? No. Why do you think that's never been used in baseball before this? I never heard it called that. Like now we're playing hardball. No, I don't remember. No, I don't think I've ever heard that. I before. think hardball's a good name. I don't like it. Okay. So anyway, it's very. It's a very early nineties. Is it just? Late be, is it just because it reminds you of hard bodies? No, because I liked hard bodies. That was. I mean, it's, are you kidding me? <laughs> You think they're gonna? Do they think there's a lot of pudgy people at heart? But they're hard, brother. <laughs> okay. All right. So I never liked the name of these games. Uh, the that much said, we did review Hardball One. Gosh, when it was way so back, like 2015 or 2016. It was, 20, it was I think early it was November on. of 2016. Okay. I think when it was, because we actually did a playthrough of this with Brent. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not, Hardball One and Two. So Hardball 2, of course, the sequel to Hardball, right. uh, released in 1990, Boat, and published by Accolade. Boom, 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 Accolade presents. Remember mm-hmm. Accolade? Mm-hmm. Uh, and developed by uh, DSI. Now, you know, we when we talk about all the various developers on the, on the Amiga, DSI is not one that you think about that right. often. I don't. No. But, but they did 40, 40 boxing, 40 driving. They did the uh, NASCAR Challenge, Cycles, Dick Tracy, Grand Prix. They did uh, Grand Prix Circuit, Test Drive 1 and 2, so, the Mickey Mouse games, ABC yeah. 1, 2, 3. Active developers. They did a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. And we both, well, you don't like Test Drive. The I deuce. Recall. I like, I love Test Drive 2. Anyone think got any sense liked it? No. I, I, well, listen, the chat knows I'm right. So... They also, Accolade was also behind uh, the football game, Fourth and Inches. Hardball and Fourth and Inches are eerily similar with different sports, aren't mm-hmm, they? Mm-hmm. They use the same sort of menu system. Right. They have sort of the same look. Yeah, I would call it a look, for sure. A look, yeah. So, um, if you're not familiar with the Hardball series that Hardball 2 uh, comes from, this is a take on the American pastime baseball, American baseball. Uh, it's not licensed, so you will be playing, you know, generic teams. However, uh, unlike the original hardball that we played, this one has the ability to go in and you can actually go and edit the teams. You make your own team. Mm-hmm. I did this back in the day, and I did it this week. I went through from memory and put in the 1978-ish Cincinnati Reds. Dan Dreesen at first, Ron Oster at second, Dave Concepcion at shortstop. Uh, Ray Knight at third. You had uh, Geronimo in outfield, George Foster, and you had Ken Griffey Sr. And then I had Mario Soto pitching. Who was catching? Johnny Bench. Johnny Bench, yeah. Listen, I was at his last game, so there you go. So anyway, 
that shows you what I loved baseball as a kid. Mm-hmm. And you could put all their na- uh, names in, and you could actually go through and edit their stats, and you also put their backups in. This is very nice. Mm-hmm. This was sort of novel. I don't know if this was the first game to do that. I mean, uh, Earl Weaver, yeah. they may have let you do it in that. I'm not right. Gonna, I think Earl Weaver did. Did Star League let you edit too? Heck no, no, no. Star League was very, very basic. You really? couldn't change anything. Yeah, you might be right. Anyway, uh, it's nice to be able to edit your team. Uh, this this game also gives you a choice of stadiums that you can go through. I mean, we're, somebody, somebody skipped some innings here on this video. Uh, the uh, uh, You get a choice of like, what is it, about five, six stadiums. There's a hardball stadium. It's like this generic stadium. Then there's mm-hmm. like Kansas City is one. Uh, Boston. Right. New You've York. got all, all of the iconic stadiums. San Francisco. All the iconic yeah. stadiums of America at that time. Yeah. So this is, uh, you know, you've got Yankee Stadium, so you've got the monuments in the outfield. Yeah. You've got Boston with the green monster that really looks more blue in this game. Well, than I do think they did a good job on that. But, uh, I mean, they, they modeled these very well. You've they got, did. They you got good. Wrigley in yeah. Chicago. Wrigley. That was yeah. the one I could think of. Uh, you got Kansas City. I think Kansas City has a bunch of fountains in the back. It's got a waterfall. The waterfall. Remember when they used to have that waterfall back there? See, I, was, I never watched the American League. So I, I didn't never... either. <laughs> But I remember thinking, that's cool. They've got a waterfall yeah. at this stadium, and it was cool. It's not, now they've got all kinds. It's like a carnival. Well, every, every stadium is awesome these yeah. days. So. Uh, the, uh, uh, I believe Riverfront what, not present. No. The, the hard as nails Which hurt. is funny because you could have put no. that one in there and covered Riverfront and Pittsburgh. That's true. They're there. the same stadium. Now, was the Cardball 2, was that the dome one? Or was, I know there was one dome. Or maybe it was Toronto that had the dome. There's one dome stadium. In, in oh, I don't know. I can't remember. So you pick your stadium. And then you, of course, this, they didn't reinvent the wheel with this thing. You pick your teams, you pick your stadium, you get a, when it comes up with a menu, you can have an exhibition game, you can play a league game. And then once you pick your teams and your stadium, you can also pick the controls. This is nice. It lets you pick, uh, this is where you'll set up whether you're playing the computer or playing against another or human opponent. So you've got one to two player on this. It's all set up like a DOS shell. Uh, you've it got, is. <laughs> it, absolutely, yes. So you hit escape and you go up and you've got a menu up at the top of the screen and you page over with the arrow keys or the joystick to make your selections. Yeah. Uh, if there's one thing that this game has, it's menus. Yeah. <laughs> menus to beat the band. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, you also, once you pick your team, oh, you got, I forgot you can turn the DH on and off, mm-hmm. which I like. Mm-hmm. Eight DH. Yeah, no good. We, me and you, we're very similar when, mm-hmm. our, when our, it comes to that sort of thing. You can also have the computer play itself yeah. if, you're, if you're so inclined. Mm-hmm. Once you pl- pick all this stuff, then it's time to actually play the game. Uh, and you get a nice uh, rendition of the National Anthem, which you can skip. Luckily skippable. They play the whole thing. So, the quick question. Thing. Better National Anthem, the Amiga or Color Baseball for the Coco? Oh, boy. The Amiga could definitely do it better. It could do it better. But... I'm going to have to give the edge to color baseball on this one. Also, the color baseball the, uh, on the on the Coco, they purposely cut out most of the right. national anthem. <laughs> it's like, good enough. You're good. Uh, and so once you are done with that, it's time to play ball. Uh, if you play the home team, of course, as you would expect, you start out in the outfield. And then you are confronted with the first round of in-game play menus. Yes. <laughs> now, this is actually kind of neat. As the batter... You are given the choice to say to hit hard, you know, like swing hard. It's a full swing. A normal swing, mm-hmm. a ground right. swing, bunt. a bunt. Right. You get options that you pick before you bat, right. which is it's a, well. I mean, one you, of the few places. Other, it's not that usual. Well, here's the, here. That. This was the philosophy of the, the developers of this game. It's like. We want to give the player complete control yeah. over what they're doing here. So we're going to give them an option to do anything that they want to do. Right. So not only can you pick your swing type, but you can also pick which area of the plate you want to swing over. Yeah. Yeah. Because you get a little cross here. Now, yeah. uh, or it's almost like a tic-tac-toe. Right. And you put that, which you I, put I, I like that there. system. Now, when you're pitching, you get your list of pitches. You get a change up, a curve, a sinker. A fastball, a screwball. Am I leaving any out? I think that's it. And you get, which is nice. Now, not every pitcher has all these pitches, as I, to my recollection. Although the pitches I picked had them all. But I, as I recall playing this, they, not every pitcher had, for example, not every pitcher throws a screwball. Right. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> in, yeah. real life, in real life. Or that's in a game. Yeah. Can you imagine that? That would make the game a lot more interesting. There'd yeah. be a lot more wild pitches. Oh, yeah. Um, 
The man, who was the guy that threw the knuckle that played for Boston? Remember how I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, Wake, Tim Wakefield. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. He looked, I and love the thing that is, thing. his approach was like this. Yeah, and it would, it would, it would flutter. I yeah. thought to myself, this guy's an MVP. <laughs> He's like winning a World Series. But anyway, pitching is interesting because first you pick your pitch, and then you pick where you're going to throw the pitch, and then you hit the button, and you just... You just sit back. Yeah. That's your done. He throws the pitch. And he throws the pitch. And once the pitch is gone, you have no control over where it goes. Mm-hmm. So then the batter has to actually play batter in real time. Mm-hmm. And like Boat said, he's got like a tic-tac-toe board, and the baseball will appear in it. or Basically, you, a dot will appear in it. It's sort of telling you where you're going to be swinging. I tended to not use that all that much. I just didn't swing at stuff that wasn't pretty close to the strike zone, if I could help. Yeah. I mean, here's the way that I played. Okay? Yeah. And I I, I did okay. I always picked full swing. Wow. I did not do that. I always picked full swing, and I always swung over the plate, and if it looked like it wasn't going to be over the plate, I took it. Yeah. How often did you strike out? I grounded out more than I struck out. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I got out. Now, here's the problem. The problem I had with this game was that I could put the ball in play, but the, the fielding, the computer's fielding ability is off the chain. Yeah, it's way better. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to that in a okay. second. I wanna, one thing I want to talk about is the batting. So if you take a full swing, you're less li- you're more likely to miss, okay, presumably. Uh, and so I usually I usually only use full swing if I had a man on. Okay. Okay. Um, I remember hardball one, and I went back and played it to double check, and I had more success hitting in hardball that I did in hardball two. Now, hardball two still had stats and stuff, or hardball one still had stats and whatnot because pre- the, allegedly the stats play a heavy role in your abilities. And I remember playing this heavily back in the day, and I thought they did a pretty good job with the stats. Well, I mean, one of the things that you can do in this game is you can go through and edit your stats and make yourself awesome and make the computer horrible and yeah. kind of cheese it that way. I yeah. didn't do it, but I know that you can. Yeah, and it made. I remember it making a difference when we did mm-hmm. that. But when me and Hose would, used to play this all the time, so. Uh, your stats matter, well, but still hitting, just making contact is something you've got to do. Right now, once you hit the ball and the ball goes into play, you the the camera will zoom out and to a to show you where the ball is going. Yeah. Gone. Now, before we leave this, I do yeah. want to mention this game does something that I don't believe any other baseball game I've ever seen does. All right, and it allows you to it gives you three three different angles to play the game. You can play the game behind the batter. You can get the viewpoint of hitting behind the batter. Yeah. You can get the viewpoint of hitting behind the pitcher. Or you can get a bird's eye view, which gives you the whole field, which I have no idea how you'd actually be able to hit doing I, that. No. But you And you can switch between those views anytime on the fly. Yeah. I think that's cool. It is neat. I never... I use the third person view did hit. you were you behind the hitter or behind behind the, the hitter yeah. see i started playing behind the hitter but i felt like i had a little bit more success playing behind the pitcher hitting interesting so um i guess that's personal taste or yeah. what you just used back in the day once the ball is in play then it's then it's time to uh move to that out wide shot mm-hmm. and theoretically what should happen is the player that the ball is near it should light up and you've got control of them okay Fielding in this was, part of me thinks it's very, an ingenious level of fielding, but part of me had all kinds of trouble fielding. And certainly on play, contested plays where you really had to had to get it together, it was difficult. Did you have, what, would you, what did you think of the fielding on this? Yeah, well, this is, with all baseball games, you have to develop a feel for the fielding. Right. You have to be able to know which player, especially in the outfield, you have to be able to know which player is going to be automatically selected when the ball sort of, when it gets hit the left center, you have to know, you know, my left fielder is definitely going to be the one selected to get this thing. Um, I didn't have too much trouble fielding. I thought that the fielding was more intuitive than the hitting. Um, you know, and I, I didn't like the fact that you have to throw it back to the pitcher every time. I can tell well, you that's, that. that's a baseball. That's the same way it is in a lot of games. Not in a lot of games that I play. Well, I mean, like it was the same thing in a television. A yeah, I, I think it, at some point, at some point, this was sort of at a, at, a, at a transitory time when, okay, here's what, here's what it all comes down to. Baseball is not a very well-liked sport by lots of people because it moves very slowly. And they're going to really hate this game. <laughs> and, and, and so when you play computer baseball, yeah. you've got to do some things to speed up the action. Yeah. And this game does everything it can to slow the action down. It does. 
it's funny. This game runs at a snail's pace, Boat. It really does. And when you're fielding in particular, if you're out in left field and there's a guy running the third base or second base, he'll be able to get the third. I mean, you're mm -hmm. boned. It takes forever to get the ball in. So now normally in baseball, you would hit a cutoff guy. You could do that in this too because a menu pops up that lets you pick. Which uh, wait, uh, wait, a menu pops yeah. up? It lets you pick which direction <laughs> to put the yeah. button. You mm -hmm. know, if you push the button, and, and it's good. Right. It but is this good. is one place that, well, this is actually, there are several places where the Intellivision version is better. And this is not, fielding, that's what made the Intellivision version perfect. You could instantly access any player at any mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. right? This game, it sort of tells you where to go. But often, I found the ball getting past guys. Right. And that was the big problem I had. I could field it. I could throw it back in. It wasn't I didn't understand how to do it. It was the fact that the ball would get past me before I could react quick enough. Mm -hmm. Whereas the computer, like you said, this was like, it was like Pete Rose and like every great player all yeah. rolled into one. Yeah. Ozzie Smith. Right. They were, it, would, it, was, it was murderer's everything. row out it there was. on the field, yeah. You had zero chance. Mm -hmm. Of of getting around the bases with it, and it it was a, it was it would irritate you. Now I never beat the computer this time around, but in the past I could do it mm -hmm. uh, with a proper team. Uh, but it, it, the computer is just very good; it makes very few mistakes. That much said, I was able to hit, I was able to score. I played probably five six games this week, full games, mm -hmm. and I the one thing you've got to get past is this is it's like baseball in real time. Yeah. You're exactly right. It takes you a couple hours to mm -hmm. play a game. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, it's the exact opposite of Baseball Stars 2. That's a bang, bang sport. This is more like real baseball. Like I said, I mean, it, you know, when we play like, uh, we, speaking of Neo Jiggies, we play Neo Turf Masters. Mm -hmm. You can play a full round of golf in, what, about a half hour? Right. In real life, it takes hours five to hours, play. five hours, yeah. yeah. So you don't want you don't necessarily want real time sports. That's what I'm right, saying. Right now, I will say this: the one part of this game that I enjoy having its leisurely pace is when you do hit the ball. Normally, like in Baseball Stars Two, as soon as you make contact, boom, yeah. it switches to the fielding view. In this game, when you hit the ball, you see it come off your bat, and you get about a second of it flying out in the field, and that makes you feel good. It does until the ball gets past your second right. baseman and, and rolls in the middle <laughs> in the middle of the wall. Yeah, then you feel less good. Uh, the game, this game was also noteworthy because aside from the fact that you've got real good control of your fielders where they throw, you've got excellent control of your base runners. Mm -hmm. You can lead off, slide back, you can steal, you can have multiple people steal. Uh, the, the pitchers can use pickoffs. Mm -hmm. Uh, you've got you've got all of the options are here, yeah. and you, the, it's presented in a very systematic way, like just like in real baseball. Uh, you know, they, you're only allowed to pick people off at certain times. You know, when when the pitcher's on the mound, he can't start the pitch and get halfway through and pick somebody off. You've got to do it all within the right kind of timing. And this game does a good job of laying it all out there. This isn't the worst game to show somebody that doesn't know how to play baseball and explain it to yeah. them. Yeah, in some ways, fourth and inches is like that with football. It's 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 distilled. Mm -hmm. Now, this isn't as distilled as the fourth and inches. I wouldn't say fourth inches. Is, it's a fun game. It's a good. It was a good computer football game, but it's not a good representation of football. You know, it's sort of like TV sports football. This is better. Mm -hmm. This is I, I as a kid, I really love this, but as an adult, it is so slow yeah. that I can't get into it yeah. like I used to. And I think that that is where you know, if you look at the Japanese developers and where they were taking the genre, versus if you continue to watch the Hardball series. You know, the Japanese, they just realized that the, the secret to fun baseball games is to make them as fast as you can. Now, Baseball Stars 2, sometimes I think it runs a little bit too fast. I mean, yeah. you flip that ball around so quickly, um, but th this is just, it's way, way, way too slow. The, uh, you may be asking, what changed? Between, because there's not, it doesn't look a ton different from hardball. Well, mm -hmm. allegedly there's more frames of animation. There may be. There's also, they did a lot of stuff with the editing. That was a big deal. Uh, some, of the, some of the base running stuff wasn't in the first one. Uh, they, the multiple stadiums, the, uh, there's more stadiums. You get seven stadiums to choose from. They mostly did, it's almost, this is slightly more than you would get in an update patch. I mean, it's just barely enough. Mm -hmm. Clearly, Accolade had figured out how sports games work early on. Right, right. We do barely enough to call mm -hmm. this a new game. Well, I mean, here's the deal. 
what were they competing against at this time? There was there wasn't that much stuff out there, especially on the Amiga. Well, in '90, there uh, there was probably a few. Th- well, I'm this didn't come. This didn't, this didn't come out in '90. Uh, this, didn't this come out in like '87 or '88? No, no, this came out. If this in came out in '1990. Oh, that's pathetic. Now, this is we a didn't pathetic mention this, display but, if this came well, out in 1990. You, you can't just Jeez, I've been thinking this came out in 1987 since no, Jump Street. No, oh so my gosh. This was converted over from PC, DOS. The DOS version of this came out in 89. Okay, and believe it or not, Boat, not only did this, this only got ports to the Amiga and to the Apple Macintosh of all things. Well, I mean, if you think about it, on other platforms, there were games that would destroy this. The funny so. thing is, I looked for, I wanted to look for Mac footage of it, and I couldn't find any uh, at all. I'm going to so, have to fire it up. Yeah, you may have to actually play this, book yeah. because I, I couldn't find any Mac footage at all to speak of, which I thought was kind of neat. Now, I've played this on the PC as well. Mm-hmm. In fact, uh, We'll hop over. I did a little comparison here. Oh, I didn't do it. I found one. And uh, what you've got here is it's pretty similar, you know, all, all things considered. Uh, the PC version is, I, I'll put it so we haven't played both. They both sort of are kind of about the same to me. Mm-hmm. I didn't think there was a whole lot of difference in them. Uh, the Amiga's probably got better music. But, you know, one thing I noticed on the box of this is that this is one of those games that had the PC graphics lit featured. And so here we go, mm-hmm. you know, and this mm-hmm. was 89. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can tell by looking at it, it's a, at, at the barest minimum, it's it's very similar to the Amiga or in the same ballpark. It's not like the Amiga's blowing it away. Now, let's face facts. Accolade played this down to the PC's minimum here on the Amiga. They didn't mm-hmm. do anything to make it better, okay? Uh, and which is sad, but that's, that's the way it was back in the day, you know? So... Um, I looked up some reviews on this thing, Boat, to see how it fared uh, in the media. There wasn't a ton out there, but I found some. So, the people at Lemon give this a 6.67, not popular. I wonder uh, how many people voted, though. I mean, those Lemon guys, they're it probably not It wasn't a ton. Yeah. Well, you might be right. Amiga, this got some, a broad, you know, it's, I didn't know if this got a, on my list of games, this is listed as Hardball 2 NTSC. I don't know if this even got a, a port to to Europe, a PAL version. I would I would be surprised if it didn't. Well, but here's what changes my mind in the other direction. Amiga Joker looked this over and said it to Amiga, Amiga Action. Right. In fact, all the games magazines did. So mm-hmm. Amiga Action gave this a 64%. Amiga Joker gave it a 74%. So that's the rare occurrence where Amiga Joker comes up past Amiga Action. Mm-hmm. Uh, Info gave this a 4.5 out of 5. They loved it. Uh the, the Games Machine, 70%. Your Amiga, 83%. And Zero gave it 81%. Here's the thing. How many baseball games do you think the folks over at Amiga Joker were playing? You know, I don't know the popularity of base, American right. baseball. So they probably it. were like, hey, this is a baseball game. It looks like what we think baseball should look like. 75, well, a know, solid C. You're sort of burying this. But this did do things you're not going to do on the console. Well, and, 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 you know, if you are a stat fiend, yes, and and me and Hose were, then then this is your game. You gotta, Absolutely, it Absolutely. was either Hardball Two, I think it was Hardball Three, where me and Hose it was the year the Reds played the A's in the, in the World Series, 1990, and, and one, so it would have been two. Me and me and Hose put in both teams, and we simulated the World Series on here, and it was real fun to do. It was fun to use. It's again, this was novel. I'm seeing real players that play for my team in the exact year that the game's out, and I'm watching them play. And it, that made it a lot more fun. Hose made a team of nothing but wrestlers. Mm-hmm. Sure, you know, that is not because that doesn't. Yeah. yeah. So, so that was that was a novel concept, and this game didn't feel as slow back then. It really didn't. It felt like this was like a really cutting edge. Well, game. again, it all comes from your perspective. You yeah. Know, I would have never in a million years been able to pick this up because in 1990. I'd already played a million games that were a ton better. Now, could they? Could you edit stats? Could you put in people's names? No. So, but that didn't matter to me. I cared right. about the game. And some people it wouldn't. Yeah. Normally, you know, we did the same thing for T-West first basketball. Which mm-hmm. that, that game was not always great, but you also could do all this stuff too. With yeah. Double. Now, I I would put TV sports basketball leagues ahead. Yes, of this absolutely. Game. And and for one, and it's also not fast. No, but, it plays slow, but it plays well. Yeah. You know, and I, but I think this is, I mean, one thing you've got to give hardball is it managed to pull off, it managed to pull off fielding, pitching, batting on a one button joystick with, and give you full control of all the players of where they throw the ball and the yeah. base stealing. 
So someone sat around mm-hmm. and really pondered the control scheme on yeah, this. I can't argue with you about that. This also lets you play with the keyboard if that's your company. Yep. You can even play this with the mouse if mm-hmm. you want, as mm-hmm. wacky as that is. Yeah. So you got to give them credit. Yeah. It, I wouldn't bury him because I think it's a game of its era. And you can keep, keep in mind, this is an 80s game that just had to be released on the Amiga in the 90s. Mm-hmm. So there's that. It's an 80s game. And... They gave you a lot of stat stuff, and a lot, it was like if they took Earl Weaver and then made it look nice and then pl- and fairly played. I hope that we get. I don't know. It seems like we play one baseball game every six to seven years. Yeah. So I don't know if we'll ever get there. I don't think we've Earl covered Weaver. one since. Or, uh, we have But one. I'd love to cover Earl Weaver just to compare it with this. Yeah. So, but but I think this. I always thought this was a kind of a neat game. I will say this week the rose tinted glasses. Flew off though because <laughs> this is one that's really, really slow, mm-hmm. and so that's the that's it, just what it, it is. It is what it that's is. That's right. We got one bit of Discord uh, note on this boat, uh, if you'll allow me. Uh, our good, actually, we got two. Wow, one here came in at the eleventh hour. Boat. Our good buddy. Maybe we got three here. No, we got two. Okay, our good buddy uh, Anuig. You know, how do you pronounce his name? I'm doing... That is way too small for me to read. You A-U- want to drag it over? A- no, I can't. It's oh. A-U-N-E-G-G. I know him. I've talked to him, but I don't know how to pronounce that. You want to give it a shot? Onig. Onig. That sounds good. Onig writes, Hardball 2 seems too slow-paced at first. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. Especially considering the list of baseball tiles I had in the early 90s. I decided to read the manual and explore the options and realized this game is a bit of a stopgap between a more casual arcade-style baseball and a pure... Hardcore similar. That's well put. Sure. I love the interface for selecting swings and pitches, but it seems that a two-player game. Uh, it seems that in a two-player game, the person who chooses first could potentially give away where they are swinging or pitching. Luckily, when you hit your button in a two-player game, you can continue to move the thing around to trick people. In case you were wondering about that, we should have mentioned that. Mm. Um, this game grew on me the more I played it. And if I had this four or five year old, uh, and if I had this as a four or five year old back when it was released, I would have loved it. Geez, four or five. You love everything when you're four. Or five. Uh, I would, um, even with the absolute, absolutely no nostalgia for this game, it still seemed like playable and fun. Better than Tommy Lasorda, worse than, worse than Oral Weaver, six out of ten. That's our kind of guy right there. Mm, Tommy Lasorda is definitely my kind of guy. Oh, man. He liked his pasta, he that's did. for sure. Our good buddy, Graham. W. Yeah, Living big, legend. I believe he's Big a Mariners baseball fan. fan. Yeah, Seattle he? guy. He writes, One thing this game got right was a technical aspect of baseball, and you are presented with many options to please any big baseball fan. Unfortunately, the gameplay itself is let down. Is a letdown. It does not really improve on what was attempted uh, on the first game in the series. I was also disappointed the art is not much better than the C64 version of Hardball. That's true. Even with all those options, I still prefer Earl Weaver or Bo Jackson over this one, 6 out of 10. So, two 6 out of 10s on that boat. You know, I will say this uh, about this game. Uh, again, it's a game of its era, but the stats are the one thing that places it over the top. I think the stopgap comment was dead on. It was a stopgap between what would be and what was, and that's all there is to it. That's, that's the done deal on that one. Any final thoughts on the old hardball no. boat? Now, did you find this for sale anywhere on the old eBay? You know, believe it or not, I didn't even look on eBay. I, for, a rare lapse on my account, but since I'm sitting here at a computer, I can look in about two seconds, and we'll see if there's anyone selling one right now. You, you know, know, I had not heard of Tommy Lasorda baseball before. I don't really? Think that, I don't think that got an Amiga release. Maybe that was just on the season. Well, I believe Tommy Lasorda, the one I see, like I remember it being on the uh, Genesis boat, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. Well, that. Or that, it might even be the mass system. Uh, that would make sense to me. If you are looking for a copy of Hardball 2, you can buy one right now. Uh, the, it's the. It looks like it's complete in a box. 32 bucks or best offer in the States. Then there's a guy here, Factory Seal. Ooh. This is Hardball 1, 245 bucks. Like it. I like it. And if you're overseas, so here we go. This answers this question. Uh, Coming out of the UK, Hardball 2, uh, 33 bucks. And there's several copies. So I guess it did get a release overseas, Boat. You know, overseas, I think that they they enjoy. I don't think you could release a cricket game in the United States. But overseas, they're a little bit more open-minded when it comes to their sports. And you get your World Series baseball on (laughs) the For a second, I thought you said crooked. I was like, can't release a crooked game. Oh, yeah, you can. (laughs) You can and we will. By God. That's the end of Hardball Boat. All right, man. Next, let's talk about what's been going on over on the YouTube channel, Aaron. All right. 
So, uh, we didn't have a huge week this week, but we got into some trouble here, Boaster. Yeah, we did. Um, first things first, we did a little thing on ARG last week. It's a little thing I like to call the game.com. Yeah. The game.com. Have you ever played one of these things? Never, Boaster? never. I hadn't either, but I kind of want one in a weird way. I don't know. what Does that make me bad? It might. Well, I don't, you know, one of the things that kept coming back on this show on the reviews and also when you talk about it was don't be fooled by the clarity of the emulator. Yeah, that, that's yeah. true. Because yeah. the uh, that's for darn sure. It looks a lot better on the screen than it does in real life. That much said, my game wasn't great. I'll admit that. It looks good, but Brent's Monopoly game was off the charts. It looks great. This is the first time seeing it. Yeah. Yeah, it looks, it's, it plays great. Man, I couldn't believe how good this was. We had a lot of fun, despite the fact that Brent's gold bricking right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's pretending to be hurt. He's like Bobby Hina when he used to wear the, uh, the, the uh, neck, brace. neck brace. He's not really <laughs> incapacitated, but he's already told me he's still laid up. So it's going to be another, it's going to be another Hugh Hefner Road weekend no. at the Brent. So look at that. Did, that looks luxurious. Too, the yeah, isn't that cloth? nice? He, yeah. looks like he's, he looks like he's living the dream there. He did. He was too sick to put his background up. He told me. <laughs> That's why it looks like he's in prison. That's his backdrop. I want to go to that prison where you dress on Terry Cloth. How many prisoners you see walking around? You don't want to go to that one. That's the worst one, Bo. Trust me on that. You don't want to go to that one. So that's ARG, if if that's your cup of tea. Bo, we did a little uh, show here. What did you tell the folks about this one? So this is our latest episode of Our Sinclair, the ZX Spectrum podcast. It just dropped. This is Enduro Racer. Now this is this was a real interesting game because you and I talked about how we never really played or saw much Enduro Racer in the arcades. We always saw Outrun in all of its many guises, but then we had some listeners from the UK say it was the opposite situation over there. They always saw Enduro Racer. I saw that. Yeah. I, I and, was I was surprised yeah, by that. It's kind of interesting. It may be how the distribution worked, but uh, you know, Enduro Racer, one of the fastest moving racing titles on the spectrum for sure. Uh, well, I really enjoyed playing this one, although I didn't enjoy getting hit by the rocks all the time and flying off my bike. No, but no. Uh, but this is a, it's a it's a it's a good effort, and uh, you know for the humble spectrum, it's a solid title. I uh, it's not the best. No. <laughs> it's not. I, it's I not think the... when you talk about racing games on the ZX Spectrum, I think this is this is in the upper echelon, man. Well, uh, it, it did. I wasn't a particular. Particularly fond of this one, mm, Boat. Okay, well. Wow. That's the way it gets. So you can't they can't all be winners, Boat. That much said, there's one thing you can all that's always a winner. That's right. And that's our good buddy, the Flaxter. The Flackaroo. And this week, Sprite Castle plays games that start with the letter M. Mm. He Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> Very good, Boat. So I was actually I watched this one. There were games played and they had M in them, Boat. I wonder if this is going to be an ongoing series where he's just going to go through the alphabet starting with M. I don't know. This is as basic as it gets. <laughs> and, you know, games that start with the letter M. So I wonder why M. He wanted to play Mario Brothers. Is that what it was? Quite he also close. must have wanted to play some of these other games he tried. Although he did play a lot of Mario Brothers. He also played some Mr. Do. Right. He also played some this. Look you at know. this. What, I don't even know what this is called. Oh, Mad Planets thinks this is what this is called. This looks pretty good. Yeah. I was like, man. I've seen Mad Plants before. I never really paid attention to it. it like I said, it looks like they paved the if they the Moon Patrol map. They paved it. They put like a highway <laughs> in. They changed the perspective. That's what it reminded me of. And of course, you know, if you're playing M, you know you got to play some Mortal Kombat. Oh yeah. So we watched that. He got hurt a lot. Let me ask this. you a question. When Raiden does his Superman attack, what does he utter? He goes. He goes. Home I always thought he said Lords of Arabia. Why? Why would he hate? That? Why would he do I that? I thought he had a love for the man. Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah. I'm, maybe, maybe what I'm hearing is Japanese for Lawrence of Arabia. Mm. He played whatever that is. I mean, <laughs> and of course, he had to end. So, someone demanded that he played Metal Slug. Then, I, of course, I was there to badmouth Metal Slug because I never liked that. It's game. not. It's not one of my. It looks either. beautiful. It is a very nice looking game. You know, and sure. it's very creative. I still like yeah. it. Yeah, I'm how, with you. I'm with you on really? that. Really? Yeah. Oh well, man. When we agree on that, it's weird. Last but not least, Boat. Here it is. <laughs> it's Frodo in L. And this From time Snow out, White through Oliver and Company. Have you seen Oliver and Company? Boy, it's been a while. I think. I, the, I always thought that was a Don Bluth <laughs> film. I don't know. No, it's not because it's Disney. I don't, I don't got them all memorized. I don't know. This was this was really during the the, the down years of the Disney Corporation yeah. when Oliver and Company was kicking so around. So Frodo, 
uh, not a, uh, brevity. Frodo is not thy name. <laughs> Frodo gets in for the long haul. And yeah, he, he does. went to work today, or when he did this, and two two hours and forty three minutes of Disney stuff. He and by the way, he's given uh, Snow White a good look there. He played that one for quite a while. Mm-hmm. You know, he's got more patience. Hey, look, there's Pinocchio. Look, look at that. Talk. Look at that animation on Pinocchio. Oh, yeah. That looks, that looks what, great. What, what machine do you figure that's That's probably on? Mega Drive. That I'd looks say. good, doesn't it? Yeah. Look at that. Look how smooth it is. Have you played this one? No. I'm going to have to check Look at the out. background. It's got, it's, uh, it's got parallax got Parallax scrolling. and the copper. And that nice? Amiga. Yeah. It, which, listen, can't you not bury the Amiga at every chance? Look at that. This is where you go get water from the well. Oh, it's <laughs> I love that game. You know, oh, that's your, that's your uh, what's your name? Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's a, oh, look, here's an Amstrad game. Let's see what he's playing on here. Is this the Oliver and Company Amstrad game? No, I think this is the the old, uh, isn't this, this the, the Egyptian book. one? Is that what it is? Yeah. Did you, ever see, did you see this in the theater? No, I was like negative five. Yeah, but they release it every couple years. They release it. I don't think they do Remember that Remember that anymore. song, Burn the Surf I love the soundtrack. Wasn't that in that, in that, yeah. yeah, that's part of this yeah. one. So, yeah, if you're into Disney at all, or you're into video games, or you're into Frodo, just be look wearing a hat like that. Mm-hmm. What do you call that? Uh, that style of hat he's got on. That's there. the guy. That's Khabib. It's a Khabib hat. Is that what that is? Yeah, you know that UFC guy. You mean a Khabib, a Mega Men? Knob? Yeah, that's not a Khabib hat. His hat's a furry Russian hat. That's what that is. Isn't that's it? that's got ears. You well, think a, the the scariest killer from <laughs> Kazakhstan is gonna walk out wearing that hat? I don't know. You maybe. Kidding me? No, he's not. Is the answer? Okay. Anyway, Frodo and L. Wacky hats. Crazy games, plenty of time to sit back and soak it in. Guess what? I'll be watching this bad boy this evening. I can mm. tell you that right now. Because I like to put his stuff on to relax. Yeah. Frodo's not excitable like we are. No. He, he, he's the he's ultimate chill, chill guy. Yeah. Yeah. We are not good at that. No. Like, if you're listening to our church bedtime, I'm and all of a sudden we scream about something, <laughs> you, you know how hard it is to normalize our audio? That's out. <laughs> and the Brent, when, he, when, he, when I said I won the thing this week, he goes, no, and he, it was almost like a black metal death metal singer. I was like, "Well, I can't normalize that. We're boned. No one's gonna. They're gonna blow some speakers up." That's all we got, boat, from the new song Cavalcade. All friend. right. Well, now with all that said, boat, what's next on the agenda, my friend? Aaron, we're we're gonna give this one big shout, uh, and then we're gonna go quiet, radio silent for a while. Okay. Because uh, we can't talk about it every week. But yeah, oh yeah. Boat yes, Fest 2021, and by 2021, I mean 2022, is coming. <laughs> You're bad with dates, aren't you? <laughs> I'm not good at math. <laughs> Ask Neil about that. So, um, if you like fun... And I you, like fun. And you hate sucking, then come to Boat Fest. Because it's not going to suck, and it's going to be fun. <laughs> you okay? hate sucking. <laughs> This pitch line. I'm glad that's not the tagline on the poster. I saw you think Brent's we happy now? We hate sucking. <laughs> so, uh, June 24th and 25th, here in picturesque Hurricane, West Virginia, at the Holiday Inn Express, mm-hmm. we have uh, rented out their, uh, their convention center, their meeting massive. room, massive. massive meeting room. We are going to have all kinds of consoles, all kinds of computers. Aaron's going to bring his virtual pinball machine. We're going to have everything set up. We're going to have contests. We're going to have a charity auction. We're going to have Frank from Retro Rewind doing repairs live on site. He's going to be recapping Amigas. He's going to be talking to people. Is he going to be bringing down some merch? To this He's going to be bringing merch. We're going to have giveaways. We're going to have panels. We're going to have live recordings of every show on the Amigos Retro Gaming Network, as well as a special live edition of Sprite Castle, oh, hosted man. by Rob Flack that's O'Hara. Gonna be, that's going to be a lot of fun, isn't it? We're going to have karaoke. It's going to oh, be yeah. nonstop. I'm just telling you. It's going to be nonstop fun for two days. You're not going to want to miss it. Uh, tickets are available right now. They're cheap. 25 bucks gets you in the door all weekend long. Boatfest.info. Yeah. If you are anywhere on the eastern seaboard, uh, check out the Google Maps. It's not going to be as far away as you think. West Virginia, for all its sort of stereotype of being a remote place, is actually pretty centrally located. Yeah, plus we've got the interstate that goes, bam, right yeah. to it. The interstate goes, it literally it drops you off at the doorstep. You're not going to be out in the hills. Yeah. You're not going to be out in the hill country. I mean, you're going to be in the hills, but you're not going to be out in the, in the sticks. Right, right. You know? 
Um, so we are going to, I'm in the process of crafting the schedule and maybe in a month or two we'll have another Boat Fest update. I'll tell you all about what's going down, but with, ticket sales have been okay so far. We've sold you know, six or seven tickets so far, and uh, we can hold a maximum of 50 people in the meeting room. They're all, you're going to sell so, this thing out, though. There's yeah. no doubt about that. Now, yeah. what, let me just say this. Boat, boat, you're too kind, all right? I'm going to give the Brent job. Okay, man, this. do it. Listen, if you're the East Coast, if you're anywhere in the continental North America, if you're in Mexico... If you're even in Brazil or somewhere, just come on ahead and come on up. And if you're in Canada and get down here, fine. Come on down. On top of everything else, let's say you've got an Amiga guy. Listen, here's here's the Aaron logic, okay? Our good buddy at Retro Rewind, our sponsor, our good friends, come to town, all right? If you got stuff for Frank, drive it up here. Hand it to him. You know what I'm saying? Bam. You just saved yourself shipping right there, and he may just do it right there in front of you. That's right. At the bare minimum, but your that right there will pay for the just that it pays for your ticket, some of your gas, just just that. Mm-hmm. Plus, you could you know it's getting to him, right? You know what I'm saying? I talked to Frank about this. This is it makes it's a genius move. I was hoping he would get to come down. He is. On top of that, we I guarantee you this will not be boring. It may <laughs> it may be Hindenburg like, <laughs> but it will not be boring. Trust me. It's going to be awesome. And Josh, exciting. there will be a full-on virtual version for the rest of the world. BoatFest is going to stream live right here on Twitch the entire event. We're going to have Yeah, we're going to have multiple cameras. We're going to have gaming. We're going to have competitions going on all the time. Dancing. Dancing. Romancing, carousing. The yep. whole nine yards. Yeah. So if you are unavailable to make it, I know lots of you live uh, in areas of the world where even if you wanted to travel here, maybe because of the unpleasantness, you're unable to. Uh, we will have virtual boat fest, and we will bring it directly to your door. I'm hoping the unpleasantness has moved along yeah. way before this happens. Me so, too. Yeah, Me too. Yeah. All right, Aaron. That's going to bring us to the singing. The singing part of the show. This is the Patreon song. Now, Aaron, last week our Patreon song challenge. That was horrible. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. That pull was a horrible this up. effort last week. Well, last. Well, actually, last week. Yeah, I don't even know what I was singing last <laughs> Man, week. Man. So people identified it correctly? Nobody got it correct. I didn't know it was a song. I thought you had a fit. I was going to put my wallet in your mouth. Well, I started out singing Sweet Home Alabama. You're kidding me. And then I was like, I'm going to shift gears to Freebird. And then I forgot how Freebird went. And so I just started kind of... You forgot how free... Sing some Freebird right now. If I leave here tomorrow... But the problem is there's only two notes in there. And so if you're singing something that's not those lyrics, it's hard to identify. Why did you switch from the first thing to the second well, thing? Well, because Sweet Home Alabama also only has two notes. But why did you try... Did you think about this beforehand or was it just a spur of the moment? Did thing? I think about this beforehand? Oh, yeah, I forgot. That was the, that was the week of insanity. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, there, there was no winner last week. No, there was lots of losers. <laughs> there were though. lots of losers. But this week, we hope that some people will get it because it's another effort by the one, the only, the June Bugs, Aaron. The June Bugs are back. We've got a song for you, Aaron. Oh, if you know it, John at AmigosPodcast.com. If you're watching in the chat, make it fun for everybody. Don't guess in the chat. Just email me, John at AmigosPodcast.com. Hit it! Mr. Chip, Peter Price, Herman V. Wander, Lee Chesham, Mark Richardson, David Hearn, Chris Edwards. Ram OK, Ram OK, David Terrace, Jude Carlos, Matthew Mobius, The Phantom Magnus, Seth Gates, Alice Murphy, Christian Russo, David Z, George Rosansky, The Amiga Show, Daniel Crabtree. Super Fanny King, Crazy Lumens, William Vince, Scott uh, uh, R, Heavy Systems Inc, Bundy Frag, Lord Mark Byland, Ola Popermski, Alien Breeder, Dave Velociraptor, Calbert Boy, Lane Dinson, Daniel Williams, Luke Hudson, John Cook, Bond the Bass, Roto and L, Soul Incisor, Tech Mage, Jurgen, Mr. Cola, Bernard Lucas, Jerry Dinnington, Zorg Love Reflection, Simon Fletch, Captain Crispy, Kid the Bites of Caffeine, Gary, Heather Free Lunch, Kate Fox, David Pickford, Cameron Armstrong. Stop. 
Exterminator, 10 Minute Amiga, Retrocast, Bernard Quinn, RMC, Tim Drew, Joseph Ferris and Kyle Letter, Rob O'Hara, Matthew Laramore, Andy Craig, Sean Zoho, Mark Big Rollenberg, Andrew Mons, Joe the Zombie, Late Kellon, Alan Kebab, Chekote, Level Lord John Marshall, Matthew Perron, Ricky DeRosha, Creepy Dead Boy, Biggie CTZ, The Slow Norris, Stephen Sorgan, Mortensen, Evan Helen, Christopher Hessel, Ravi Abbott, Chris Foles, Lauren, Sheru Graham, Bebke, Adam Battersby, O'Brien's Retro, and Vintage, Gary Hucker, Paul Bossman, Harrington, Duncan Childs, Tapes from the Crib, Josh and Adam Bradley Jones, Hugo, THT, Eric Nelson, Kim Hummy, Hubert Shad, Daniel Bingston, Brutal Barracuda, Darren Coles, Jason Warns, Pixels at Dawn, Kyo, Kyo, Barman, Kyo, 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 Barman. The Amigos Patreon song Lots and lots and lots of names Thank you everyone for your support Alright, so uh, if you know it I knew that one Send me an email Thank you everybody That wasn't the worst thing I've ever heard Well thank you um, <laughs> You had a good backup band anyway I did, I did have a good backup band Bass player's hot um, So uh we normally would read the Twitch uh, subscribers' names during this time, but we were frantically looking for it, and we could not find the list. We're not prepared, folks, because we're, we're moving into this new universe of doing the show together, so we apologize to our Twitch subscribers, but we hope the fact that we're recording the show in person again makes up for the fact uh, that we're, we're idiots. We love you. Yes. So thank Especially you. Especially me. Thank you to everybody love who you. subscribes on Twitch as well. We appreciate you. Yes, we really do. Now, Aaron, it's time to talk about what's going on next week. Coming up next week, like we're switching to the coming up next week scene. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to switch to the scene. There you go. <laughs> That's it, right? <laughs> Just tell them what's coming up. So, Aaron, next week, uh, we are going to be playing a little game called Universe. And by we, I mean not me. Heck yeah! Finally! <laughs> I've been told this some game. Love. I've been told this game is sort of complex. <laughs> And that we're going to be uh, uh, going through the ringer on this. So one. next week, I'm going to be in uh, the Windy City, Chicago, Illinois, uh, at the National Band Director Conference, the Midwest Conference, as it's known. I'll be carousing with all of my fellow band directors from all over the country. Listening, if you don't Man. know, if you don't know how band directors carouse, well. It's all I'm saying lucky. is keep your head down while you're in, in the Boy, it's going to be cold up in there, too. Well, here's the good thing. This year, I'm staying at a hotel that is directly connected to the convention center. Mm -hmm. So Now, are you driving yourself up all the way up there, or are you flying? I'm but, driving. Oh, you going to take the big drive? Yeah. You go drive into the city? Yeah. Okay, I just wonder. I mean, yeah. some people, you know, don't aren't down with that. No, I'm, I'm down. Yeah. I'm down. Very good. Um, so, anyway. What uh, do you do with these things? Well. And don't say you learn about being a band director. I mean, what do you really do? Give us the dirty... Inside hidden hot secrets. Okay, well, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll give you a rundown. This, this is my first day schedule. All right. How to recruit and retain elementary school band students. What do you mean they have to be in the band, don't they? Now, think about what you're saying. You've got a kid in middle school. Did he yeah. have to be in the band? Well, I mean, but your parents usually get you in there, right? It's like, no. You, really? The kids want to do it? My parents sort of kind of made me. <laughs> I should not be involved in the recruiting. Like <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah, and so I, I'm always looking to to get better at that. So that's the kind of thing that I that I go there to learn. So do you have to? Is, are you like a, a guy pitching a, a student to come to Oklahoma? Yes. Are you actually doing that at the elementary school? Yes. Kids? Like I, here's ways to join my band. Yes. You're the only game in town. They're gonna join any band that's yours. Well, you've got. Listen, man, you don't know how hard it is to pull kids away from video games. So okay. let's say, just for fun, we got time for a second here. Let's say I'm Billy Smith, and you've heard I'm aces on the trumpet, all right? And you want me in the band. Okay. And you come in, and I've got my phone out going like this. What? How do you How do you work the pitch? Okay, first of all, you're not aces of the trumpet because you don't know anything about the trumpet because you're in fifth grade, okay? No, okay. And you've never played you, maybe a horn he's before. Maybe he's a ringer. Would you forget about that? Just okay. give me the pitch. Okay, well, first of all, you wouldn't have your phone out because you're at school. 
I, do you want this to you be don't real go to the or kid's not? House? Okay. I How would, about you would go to his house? Oh, would that be like great? Did, you know, like Bobby yeah. Bowden. It's not. But what happens is I get all the kids out there, yeah. and I normally bring two or three kids with me from the school. What are they to, to kind of rough the kid up if he doesn't play ball? And I say no. And I oh. say okay. Hey, you can be part of the largest student organization at Winfield Middle School. You can learn how to play an instrument. Let's listen to what some of these instruments sound like. And then the trumpet player gets up there and he goes, bump, 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 oh, so bump, the, bump, bump. So they bring their instruments with them. Yeah. Are they wearing their outfits as well? well? We don't have outfits in middle school. I'll bet you had t-shirts. Well, we got, we got, yeah, they wear their t-shirt, yeah. but uh, they're not wearing a dickie. Okay. And so, Man. but anyway, yeah, that would be a no sell right there. <laughs> that kid's not going to bed with that thing on. But anyway, the kids hear that and they go, "Oh, that sounds cool." Yeah. And then that—that's how you get them. And that's that works. Uh, it works. What if you just offer them a fiver? You ever try just, that? Just raw money. Just pay them off. Here's a five dollar bill. <laughs> that would get expensive quickly because I've got like eighty kids in every grade. What so. you do is you work an angle with the band fruit. So at the end of the year, you get you, you pay off your pay. See, this is why I'm not a band director. Clearly, but the band there's nothing like band fruit. Get the old moldy grapefruit down there in did, the bottom did, of the truck. Middle school kids don't sell that. Do no, they? that's just high school. Man, we thing. didn't sell it. it. Sucked. Yeah, yeah. Amiga. <laughs> You know, have you gone back since I found all of these uh, these marching band shows from when you were in high school? Yeah. Have you availed yourself of them yet? Have you gone back and watched them? No, not really. I have been. I've been told I'm great. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, yeah. I knew that. Listen, when you see yourself marching across the field in the line with the rest of the bear tones, yeah, it makes you feel. Remember how uncomfortable the shoes were and how dumb I felt wearing that <laughs> stupid outfit. Listen, ladies love them. That was the uniform. last time I ever wore a plastic cowboy hat, brother. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> that was it for me. Well, that's it for us on Amigos this yeah. week, Aaron. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We appreciate you and we salute you. We'll see you next time. Until then. Adios. Adios.